Hey guys, what's up? As promised on my last video, which was quite a while ago, I'm finally doing a tutorial on how to make these 3D printable light boxes. It's primarily geared towards Bamboo Labs machines, but anyone can take away the knowledge of how to make these in Fusion 360. Just the last steps on the slicer will be specifically geared towards Bamboo Labs machines. Although you can print these on other types of machines, the easiest way to do them is really on Bamboo Labs machines. Before getting into the tutorial, if you want to check out some already made models free to print, you can check out my Maker World. I have many models over there, primarily light boxes. If you want to support me and the channel, I have some exclusive light boxes as well on Patreon. I have a collection with me check around 100 light boxes but I'm always uploading more and not just light boxes there are a few other things as well some coasters some keychains if you like what you see you're welcome to subscribe but now let's get on with the tutorial I start by choosing an image I recommend choosing simpler images at the beginning and progressing to harder and harder projects for this one, I'll choose a simple Easter Bunny. Easter is right around the corner, so it's pretty fitting. It's going to be a simple three color light box. First thing you want to do is convert the image to a vector. And the best site I found to do this, and the one that has less errors when opening it in Fusion, is Vectorizer AI for me. It used to be free, unfortunately, now it's paid, but for what it does, it really is the best. I recommend using these settings. I found that these give the best results for me, but feel free to change them around to fit your liking. Okay, now I'm gonna download it. Here to the desktop. Now I have the SVG over here. And we can finally go into Fusion. We're gonna start by creating a sketch, selecting this plane. And now I'm gonna use a construction line of a square to represent the size of the bed. I like to leave a little margin, so for Bamboo Labs machines, I do 250 by 250 millimeters just to guide the, the design. I'm going to save this file as LED simple Easter bunny. Okay. Now we go here, insert, insert SVG, insert from my computer, uh, bunny. It's here. We have the Easter bunny. I like to do select this button to make it because it's face down on the bed and now I scale it to leave a margin of one little square around one little square around the whole model should be fine now I select double click the outline and select O on the keyboard for offset and I do a 10.5 millimeter offset. Okay, now I grab the fillet tool and I'm gonna fillet all of these corners to 0 0.5 millimeters. I go around the whole perimeter. That one's a bit too small, so I'll leave it for the end. Okay. All of these are okay. I was missing one. Here it is. This one has another point here, so we can't do it as big, but you do it as big as possible. And in this case, it's 0 0.2 millimeters over there. Now I select the outline again and I offset it to minus 245 millimeters and then again 
minus 4.45 millimeters. I select this outline again when I want a wi white perimeter around the model. In this case, it's primarily black, so I want to something to make it pop. And I'll offset this 0 0.4 times 8. I like to work with increments of line widths. It's easier for the slicer, I guess. And I'm going to do the same here. Try and use the fillet tool to use 0 0.5 millimeter fillets just so it isn't as hard for the nozzle to get into these nooks and crannies. This should be fine. The sketch is done. You can finish it over there. Select this line, press E on your keyboard for extrude, and I like to extrude it 8 millimeters. Okay, new component, and there you have it. I changed the name of the component to black. Go to the sketches, make the sketch visible again. Now to select all the other black parts, hold shift while selecting these parts. Let me just check the image. Okay, these dots are black as well. Again, press E on your keyboard to extrude. And for black colors, I like to use one millimeter. And I join it with the other outer rim. Okay. Now for the white color, select all the parts while holding shift and now press E to extrude and colors other than black, I like to use 0 0.8 millimeters, always as a new component. Now we want a different color for the egg, so while holding shift I press all the egg parts, extrude and do 0 0.8, 0 0.8 millimeters again as a new component. Here I like to name them to the colors, white, black, and when I want to leave the color up to the user to choose, I simply name the object, in this case, egg. The faceplate is ready, almost ready. I like to select this edge and then press F on your keyboard to fill it and use a 0.6 millimeter fillet just to ensure that it will fit smoothly into the box because I leave a very small bit of 0.05 millimeters which should be fine for Bamblab's machines. If you find that the fit is not good for you, you can increase it or decrease it to your liking. Now I select this edge, right click, mouse button, offset plane, 70 millimeters. Now I right click the offset plane and create a sketch. Select this face and then press P on your keyboard for project. And this line will be projected to the sketch we created. We select both planes and extrude it two millimeters. Okay, new component. Now we can hide the sketches and the faceplate. I'm going to rename this to box. Right click the bottom here and create sketch. Double click the perimeter. O on your keyboard for offset and do 2.4 millimeters. Now I'm going to select here and extrude it with the E on the keyboard, 30 millimeters, and now join. 
here we go that's the box ready the model is ready but if you want to help visualize it you can press a on your keyboard to show this appearance menu and color it to your liking i like to use powder coat black and box and leds white for the egg i'll use yellow why not and the light box is pretty much done you can save it and export it i like to export it as a step file you can open the file and everything will be properly displayed on the slicer okay now we have the step file and we can finally open it on bamboo studio so now we're in the slicer i like to save the project as underscore AMS underscore ready and now you can choose the machine I recommend using textured PI plate for the best results at least in my opinion but you can use other plates to your liking I'm gonna clear this just to start from a blank slate I'll use this light box latest and I'll go over the settings with you Let's just control C, create a plate, control V. Okay, now we have both plates. I'm gonna add the colors. Add the colors from the lightest to the darkest color. So white, yellow, and black in this case. And now I also add a generic, a generic PLA black and a generic PLA silk silver I'll show you why in a bit okay so now in the first plate I delete the box and I paint the model I use the light box black the other black is for the box. Let's just... Okay. Move this color tower away from the model. You have to remember when printing to remove these lines before the overall model starts printing I manually remove them I think you can change it, change that in the G code to not make this line but I haven't looked into it now select this button over here and you can change the filament sequence I like to go from the lightest color to the darkest color and here we go the faceplate is painted, now we can go to the box, delete the other parts and select lay on face and now we have a box, control C, new plane, control V. Okay, I'll show you in a sec why I have two. I painted with the generic black. And now the second one, I'm going to paint the inside. Since some of my patrons requested it, I now provide both solutions. But I still think that aluminum tape gives the best results. And there we go. The model is ready. You can make a hole either on Fusion or in the slicer. I leave it up to people to decide. Some people like it in the back, some people like it on the side. That's why I recommend people doing them in the slicer. For example, I have here a cube, negative space, and when you slice it, it should have a hole. But I have another video on my channel just about making holes in the slicer. It's pretty straightforward. Now let's go over my lightbox settings. Nothing's changed much over in the beginning. I do eliminate elephant foot compensation and I use a wall generator Arachne now this angle won't always be the same you have to check your model 
sometimes you don't even need to use arachne which is the case for this model since there aren't very small details or small lines that would require the arachne wall generator as you can see here on the first layer it's a pretty simple model and you don't need to use arachne which can introduce some black wisps but that's on a case-by-case -case basis if you have a lot of small details i recommend slicing with the wall generator arachne and changing this wall transitioning threshold angle and seeing which one gives you the best results but this will always be on a light box by light box basis unfortunately there's not a number that will work for all of them so it's good to understand why you're, you're changing this number and change it accordingly for other settings here you'll probably not see these two you have to go to preferences over here on the top or control p for windows and at the bottom here you can enable the develop mode and these two options will show up i like to increase the initial layer flow ratio to make sure there are no gaps between the colors and that the colors merge better i also activate here only one wall on the first layer next strengths here i use two wall loops some people like to use three but that's up to you here on the top surface pattern i use monotonic or monotonic line i honestly don't know which one gives me best results i keep changing it but for the bottom surface pattern and internal sol solid infill pattern i use monotonic line this over here doesn't matter much but here if you're having trouble with colors not sticking together or some holes you can also change here the infill wall overlap i use 25 percent i use between 20 and 25 here you can change the infill direction sometimes it can be useful for the models as i've said you have to slice it really go to the first layer and analyze the lines and see if i rotate this a bit maybe it looks better and will print better but that's something that comes with practice and sometimes it's not needed i mostly leave it on 45 angle most of the time let's see what's next speed speed i reduce a lot the initial layer speed and the initial layer infill as for the other speeds i also reduce them a bit mainly the this top surface which will be i think the main speed but let me check layer time speed most of the model is printed really slowly and i think it's the best to print these types of light boxes slowly for me it reduces wisps sometimes even with these reduced speeds i use the silent mode on the printer to make it even less fast that's pretty much it for speed here support i don't change anything however here the prime tower i make it a little bit smaller and you may need for some models to make it like really really thin and long imagine you have a pretty big model you have to account for it when you're designing it you can't make properly a square since on bamboo labs machines you have to account for the purge tower as well as this exclusion zone so keep that in mind when designing because you don't want to reach the end of this process and realize that your model doesn't fit on the bed another change that i do and i haven't seen anyone do is deselect this reduce infill retraction this setting to my understanding reduces retraction when traveling inside of a model which when you're printing regular models you really don't care if they're stringy inside however for us when printing light boxes it's extremely important there is absolutely no stringing because it will show up as black lines against 
the color white for example and it looks extremely bad when there's light behind it so i use this reduce infill retraction also i've been using orca slicer recently and have gotten better results and i'll show you why in just a sec because there's a new there's a new setting on orca slicer that also helps the new orca slicer setting that helps was released with Orca Slicer version 2 beta release and is called Small Area Flow Compensation. I recommend you reading a bit about it. Seems like a good feature that should help with reducing black wisps on the light boxes. It's the same reason why Arachne helps but can also make wisps, black wisps more prevalent because when you're varying the extrusion flow rate to achieve thinner and not so thinner lines when you're varying that line width there can be some issues regulating it and this small area compensation flow tries to help it a bit to the small knowledge that i have it's supposed to help with that but i could be wrong and i'm happy for you to tell me how i'm wrong in the comments let's quickly review the filament settings i can't stress it enough you need to dry your filament before trying to print light boxes especially the black filament i recommend also calibrating the filament when you get it flow rate first manual or auto and then flow dynamics calibration i do both of these let's check out the white color i reduce the initial layer temperature to 210 As for other settings, I increase retraction length to 1.2, Z-hop to 0.7, and retraction speed to 50 millimeters per second. On the advanced settings, I increase the chamber fan to 250, which represents 100% speed. Of course, this is a generic PLA, so it has the original flow ratio, but as you can see here, I have specific settings for each filament that are properly calibrated. Let's check out the black filament settings. This one has an even lower temperature, 200 degrees. You can even go lower. I sometimes use sometimes use 195 or 190. And the settings here are a little different as well. I use a normal Z-hop type and the travel distance threshold to zero. Here is the faceplate already printed. Let's take it off the build plate and see the result. Gently peel it off the build plate. It has a little dot near the tail because I didn't clean the build plate properly. Here are two examples of other light boxes that you can make using the methods seen in this video. I hope you liked the video. I'm sorry it took so long to record it. You can follow me on social media. I do commissions if you're interested in light boxes, don't want to do, do them yourself or don't have the time to do them yourself. I can make them, you can either email me with a picture or an idea for a project and I'll try to help you. You can also help me by using these affiliate links. I'm a Bamboo Lab affiliate so you can use these links when you buy anything from build plates to nozzles to anything else. For filament I have some affiliate links as well. I'll also post on the description the Vectorizer AI affiliate link. You can use it if you want. I really believe that Vectorizer AI is the best one for this type of project. It saves a lot of work from tracing lines in a vector program like Inkscape or some other tool. I really believe it's worth it. I just wish they had a annual subscription instead of a monthly subscription, but that's how it is for now. There are other tools out there, but I have yet to find a tool that works as well as this one. Lastly, I'd like to leave a huge thanks to everyone that has supported me by subscribing to YouTube, subscribing to other social media, downloading from Maker World, printables, and a special thanks to all my Patreon subscribers that make these videos possible.